Colombian leaders, supervisors, and colleagues, good afternoon and welcome to the nine month progress report. In the next few minutes, I would like to present my progress in my two projects. Well, I've got two projects regarding hemodynamic instability and gastrointestinal bleeding. And the title of my thesis would be Epidemiology and Management of Hemodynamic Instability in Gastrointestinal Bleeding. I am Mahmoud Ubaidat. I'm a full-time PhD student. And on the slide, you can see my team, my supervisor and methodology supervisor and a statistician. I would like to send them a huge like, thanks for the substantial contribution in my project. My vision would be to improve care and outcomes in hemodynamic instability regarding gastrointestinal bleeding. And we are aiming to be involved in a guideline-based treatment in the future. And the mission for that would be to prove statistically the high proportion rate of hemodynamic instability and shock in gastrointestinal bleeding and the variability in the different treatment methods. So here I would briefly talk about my two projects. The first one is actually assessing the proportion of hemodynamically unstable patients in GI bleeding, and the second project is about the management of those patients. My first project is gonna be a meta-analysis, a systematic review and meta-analysis, and is looking basically at the proportion rate of those patients. And as you read, my title is one in four patients with gastrointestinal bleeding develops shock or hemodynamic instability, which basically sums up my whole project. But before we ended up with this title, there was a really long journey behind that. So as a background about this topic, the incidence of GI bleeding is unacceptably increasing, around 100 per 100,000 population annually with an estimated mortality up to 15%. And many uh, studies showed a significant association between hemodynamic instability and mortality. And in a study that was published 2019, it was a 12-year national analysis for US patients, they ended up with a really important conclusion that gastrointestinal bleeding with shock results in a much higher hospital mortality than without shock. There is like 10 times more if the patient develops shock that he's at higher risk of mortality. So the aim is to assess the exact proportion of those patients and specify it according to the bleeding source. Here you can see the manuscript status from my project. I'm now writing the articles with the final results and our targeted uh, journal would be the APT with the shown impact factor. For our clinical questions, we, we use the COCOPOP framework. So the condition is hemodynamic instability. The context is gastrointestinal bleeding and the population is adult patients more than 18 years old. We've done the systematic search in three main databases on 14th of October last year. And our search key consists of two main concepts. The first concept is basically the gastrointestinal bleeding with different sources, and the second part is basically the hemodynamic instability and shock. This is a Prisma flowchart for the article selection process, and on the right side of the slide, you can see uh, the, um, the first hits that we got more than 11,000 hits, and after the different selection stages, we ended up with 220 articles eligible for data extraction. I would like to introduce my plots now, but before that, I would give you a short uh, orientation to how to look to my slide. On the right side, you can see the source of the bleeding, in this case, gastrointestinal bleeding, when the articles didn't actually specify the source of bleeding. So it includes the upper and lower sources. On the plots, on the first part, you can see the study. In the first column, you can see the studies, and then the event, those patients who developed shock or hemodynamic instability. And then the third column is basically the source of bleeding, in this case, GIB, gastrointestinal bleeding. And then on the right side, you can see the proportion and the 95 confidence interval. We've made the subgroup analysis based on two points. 
The first one is whether the patients develop shock or hemodynamic instability. And the second point, at the time assessment, whether it was on admission or during hospital stay. So in gastrointestinal bleeding as an overall effect, we got 25% of those patients developed shock or hemodynamic instability. And next to the plot, you can see the certainty of evidence. The next plot is about the non varicell bleeding. And we ended up with an overall effect of 22%. And if you want to go into more details, like looking at the plots, you can see the shock on admission results in a much higher proportion than the shock in hospital. Like only 7% of, uh, of the population developed shock in, during hospitalization, but 36% during hospital stay. But the hemodynamic instability was relatively close. I wouldn't say the same, but it, it was the hemodynamic instability on admission 21, and on, uh, during hospital stay it was like 26. In varicell bleeding, since it's a more severe bleeding, uh, we got to 25% as an overall, and again, you can see the shock on admission is much higher than hospitalization. And in colonic diverticular bleeding, since it's the most common source of bleeding in lower GI bleeding, we've got only 12% of those patients on admission. All these studies were assessed on admission, so we only made the subgroups based on the shock or hemodynamic instability. So as a conclusion, I would say in gastrointestinal bleeding, we got one in four patients. And in non varicell upper GI bleeding, we got one in five. In varicell, one in four. And in colonic diverticular, one in eight patients gonna develop shock or hemodynamic instability. As for all projects, we have strengths and limitations. For my uh, strengths for this project is the first comprehensive overview assessing the hemodynamic instability and shock in gastrointestinal bleeding based on the bleeding source. And we have got a huge number of articles, more than 200, with the population exceeding 6 million patients' data. And a subgroup analysis based on the time assessment, whether the patients develop shock or hemodynamic instability on admission or in hospital, that gives, uh, provided a more precise and clear uh, data in this field. As a limitation, uh, the definition of hemodynamic instability and shock was not the same among the included studies. And we lack actually the definition in almost one third of the studies and most of the studies were retrospective observational studies. As an implication for research and practice, for practice we want to increase the awareness and insight in hemodynamic instability in gastrointestinal bleeding and those patients need special attention and close monitoring and uh, for prevention as well. For the research, we want to standardize the definition of hemodynamic instability worldwide. As I said, there was uh, many different definitions among the studies and also to provide a special protocols to manage uh, those patients. My second project is going to be an international survey about the management of hemodynamically unstable non varicell upper GI bleeders since the varicell bleeding is a different story. So the background about this topic is almost the same as the first project, but what I add here is the ESG E guideline, the most recent update. They clearly say that there are gaps in the, in the guideline in the pre-endoscopic management of hemodynamically unstable patients. So they are not clear what type of fluid they should use or the optimal rate of the fluid, whether the patients should receive aggressive or restrictive resuscitation. So the aim, and many similar questions need to be answered. And one way to do that is doing an international survey to better understand the care and the assessment and the management of those patients. So our hypothesis is there is a significant heterogeneity between the different interventions and treatment methods. And we believe it's because of the number of years of clinical practice for the doctors and the individual patients factors. And for that, we're building our questionnaire, which basically contains the three main sections. The first section is going to be the demography and clinical practice regarding the doctors who are going to participate and, uh, and the hospitals that they are working at. Uh, 
The second section is going to be definition and terminology regarding hemodynamic instability. And the third section is stepwise assessment for hemodynamically unstable patients. And this section is going to be further subdivided into uh, pre-endoscopic assessment, endoscopic intervention, and post-endoscopic care. But we're going to focus more on pre-endoscopic assessment since I said uh, in the guideline there stated a clear gap there. This is a sample questions of the questions we already like created. In the first section, we're going to ask mainly about whether the hospitals provide 24-hour gastroenterological care or interventional radiology or on-call endoscopy or surgery if needed for GI bleeding. And in the second uh, section, we're going to ask the, how would the doctors define hemodynamic instability? As I said in a different studies, for example, most common definition is the systolic blood pressure less than 100 and heart rate more than 100. But in other studies, they only consider it as a lower systolic blood pressure more than 100, less than 100, or heart rate more than 100. And on the other hand, other studies included syncope and orthostatic hypotension as well. And in the last section, in the pre-endoscopic assessment, we want to understand whether those patients actually treated in a special way or in the ICU, and what kind of lab parameters we should uh, ask for, and whether uh, uh, what kind of a fluid resuscitation. Yeah, it's the last slide, basically. And uh, what type of uh, anesthesia or uh, intubation, is it done more often for those patients or not? And this is the um, um, flow chart of the survey, and now we are building a consensus. And uh, you can see my planned submission dates here. And before I close my presentation, I leave you with this quote. What we know is a drop, what we don't know is an ocean. I thank you for your attention, and I am more than happy to receive and answer questions. Congratulations on your progress, amazing presentation. So besides the source of bleeding that you investigated, uh, have you considered other risk factors for hemodynamic instability, maybe looking at different um, age for the patients or other risk factors for them, comorbidities maybe? Well, thank you for the questions. Um, basically, we, we couldn't do, like, if your question was subgroup analysis based on age or something, we, we couldn't actually do that. We have, like, a large number of studies with different sources of bleeding. And we uh, excluded those articles when the hemodynamic instability was caused by a drug, for example, or an intervention. And we only included uh, the patients if the primary admission was gastrointestinal bleeding. Mahmoud, it was a very nice presentation. My question is uh, drug-induced uh, bleeding. Did you exclude anticoagulants as well? Did I exclude what? Anticoagulant therapy, anticoagulants as well? Uh, yeah, any, any drugs, not any only, drugs. yeah, yeah. Any, all the uh, drug-induced bleeding, we excluded them. Thank you.